one of the most complicated things in circuits is when you want something to happen, but you only want that one thing to happen if something else has already happened. This forces us to use like a lot of if chips and a lot of bool variables. And there's a whole bunch of like conditions. It gets complicated real quick. So state machines is gonna kind of take care of that for us. Today I'm gonna get you kind of comfortable with the state machine, tell you how to use it a little bit, and then give you some pointers on some things I've noticed so far in using them. Next week I'll be building a monster with the state machine, so subscribe so you don't miss that. Go ahead and get started with some context. You need some context in order to kind of fully understand what they do. So we are gonna go ahead and go in the palette and get a state machine. And if you'll notice on the top right, we've got this little symbol. Every time you see that little symbol, it means that you can edit into that like a circuit board. So if we hit edit, we'll see that there is a state chip in here and you can see that it's active. And then I'm gonna clone that so we can get a second state. If you'll notice that one is inactive. So we'll get into like switching those and everything, but you can also get a state from your palette. So if I just want a state, you can just make that in there. But as I said before, if you notice these states have these little symbols on them, meaning that you can edit further into them. So we'll edit in here and we've already got some chips in here, the go-to state, that's how you're gonna switch between states. And then we'll kind of get into these later. But now you have a little bit of context. Let's go on to the Rec Room blog and they've got a great kind of sentence that explains what a state does. All right, so it's this sentence right here. Think of the state machine chip as a circuit board with a superpower. Only one child state is active at a time. This means that events inside the state machine execute when the state chip is active and do not execute when the chip is inactive. So if that sentence is a little bit confusing, let's go back in and, and I'll kind of help you understand. And then afterwards, you'll come back to this sentence and go, oh yeah, that's exactly what this is. All right, so I've renamed them state one and state two just to kind of keep it less confusing for you guys. So to get started, I'm gonna edit into state two and I'm going to get an event receiver and configure it to 30 Hertz. And then we'll get some other chip. It doesn't really matter what. We just need the orange wire to be visible. So then we're gonna hit done and get out of that one and go back into state one and do the same thing. We get a 30 Hertz receiver and hook it up to just something blank. Okay, so I don't know if you noticed, but you see this 30 Hertz receiver is glowing, meaning that it's actually sending out the 30 Hertz, the 30 signals per second. But if I exit out of this state and edit back into the other state, you see that it's not glowing, meaning it's not sending that 30 Hertz signal. So essentially because state one is active, the 30 Hertz receiver within that state is going off, is sending the signal. And because state two is not active, it's not sending that 30 Hertz of signal. So then what we'll do is we'll switch from state one to state two and you can see it actually changing. And the way you do that is you're gonna configure this state constant, switch it to state two. Okay, and then if I manually switch states by executing this chip, you'll see that 30 hertz, it goes away. And then if we check state two, that 30 hertz is now going off in state two. And then we can configure that state constant, switch it to state one, make it so that it switches back to state one. You see it stops here and then it starts up again in the first state. So let's imagine if you had something kind of like a PvP game, right? And you have these event receivers set to like when a player joins and if the game is in state one, then the player will spawn in like a lobby area or if the game is in state two, then they'll spawn like in the, in the arena, right? You can switch the state and you can choose what the event receiver player joins does depending on which state is active. Now these state machines can be synced or unsynced, meaning that the state machine is the same for everyone if it's synced or it's individual. So for instance, I have a room that's a PVP using state machines. And when you first enter the room, you're in state one where you can't be killed and you don't have health or anything. And then once you enter the arena, your system goes into state two where you are able to be killed and you are able to take damage and everything. If you did a monster, for instance, if it's synced, you can have it so that that monster is either wandering or angry and chasing people or capturing and killing people. And it's the same for everybody's system. If you need some help with networking, I've got a video on that, but you can worry about that later. 
You can also do this with custom events. So if we leave the state machine completely and we get an event definition, I'm gonna call it send signal. And then let's just get a button and we're gonna hook it up so that it sends that event. Figure it to send the send signal. And we're just gonna keep it local so it just goes to my system. But if you did like all or authority, like you can send it to certain player systems. You just have to specify who. So now if I hit this button, it's gonna send this send signal event that we just made. And I'm gonna go into our state machine. Let's edit state one. And we're going to configure this event receiver to receive that send signal event. And then we'll edit into state two and do the same thing. So now we see that state one is active and state two is inactive, right? I'm in state two right now. So if I hit this button, it's gonna send the signal, but it's not gonna show up down here because I'm in state two and state two is not active. But when I edit into state one and I hit the button, there you go. You see it's actually sending the signal into state one. So it's kind of like the main thing that the state machine is used for. We've also got these two down here, which are event receivers that come with every state. Uh, state did enter, which is pretty self-explanatory. Every time you go into the state, then this event receiver is going to go off. And every time that you exit the state, this event receiver is going to go off. So if I make this execution go off, we're going to exit state one and go to state two. So this one down here should go off. And there you see it goes off. So in order to show you guys the state did enter one going off, what I'm going to do, we're in state two now, which is active. I'm going to have the send signal from the button press go to the go to state, right? So now when I hit the button, it'll switch to state one. We're gonna leave state two and go into state one so you can actually see this event receiver go off. So now I hit the button and it'll make state two's event receiver go off, which will then make it go to state one and then you should see that glows. All right, so some things to keep in mind with a state machine, they work very similar to circuit boards in that if you want information to go from outside the circuit board into the circuit board, there's two ways to do it. You can either add ports in, so you know you can configure the state machine and add port groups and add ports and all of that. That's just like circuit boards, it's, it's more complicated. The, the easier way is to just get your event that's outside the circuit board and add a property to it. Let's just do like an integer. Then we would send it through this event sender. And then when we come into here, you'll see, you know, it's it's got this. And we can use this information within this state or whatever. If you want, as soon as the people enter the game, if you want them to be within a certain state, you can just configure this and define the default state. Right now we have state one. Again, as I said earlier, these things can be synced. So if they are synced, that means the state machine is on the same page for every single player on everybody's machine. If it's not synced, then that means, you know, on your machine, you could be in state one and other person could be in state two and it could switch and change. So let's say that you want the state of something to flip back and forth. Like every time you hit this button, you want it to go from whatever state it was in to the other state. Like kind of like just flipping a bool variable, but you want to do it with states for some reason. Let's just hit this event receiver and we're going to have it go into state two and then let me go into state two and do the exact same thing. So whenever I hit the button in state one, it's going to flip to state two and we want it to just sit in state two until we hit the button again and then it's going to flip back to state one. But let me show you what happens. It doesn't do anything. So if I go into state two, even though we're in state one and I'm hitting to switch to state two, it immediately glows and switches back to the other one. It's like the signal's not done being sent or something. So what you've got to do if you want this kind of flip flop to happen is you need to add in some kind of delay. So we'll just add in a delay of like 0.1 and then we'll go into state one and do the same thing. So now with those delays added in and see here, we don't even have to go in the chip. You'll see it switches and it'll do like you want it to do where it actually switches back and forth instead of instantly flip-flopping and not actually doing anything. If you learned something, throw an ice cream emoji down in the comments and check this video out. YouTube thinks that you'll like it. It's gonna blow up if you don't click on it, so. And to my nine percenters out there, what did you think about this type of video with the face cam, huh? I wanted to try it. I figured it'd make the camera a little bit more stable and then also like I haven't done a face cam thing in a while, so.